Salamat, Annika. Thank you, Annika. Mabuhay! Wow. And good afternoon, family. I was born a Filipino American. More specifically, a second generation Filipino American. Or in my case, being a woman. Being a, I am a Philippine <coughs> now. So that makes me proud to call myself a Filipina American. Sometimes there are other things though that make me not so proud to identify with that nationality or make me embarrassed. As a daughter of Filipino immigrants, I have a plethora of memories growing up hearing my parents say things like, you better finish your food or we'll ship you to the Philippines so you'll see what it's like to have very little. <laughs> or I'll hear things like, it's a good thing you understand Tagalog. That's the Filipino language. It's a good thing you understand Tagalog. That way they can't sell you if you get lost in the Philippines. <laughs> or my parents will say funny superstitious things like, don't sing while you're at the dinner table or you'll marry an old man. <laughs> I'm not sure if that one is specifically Filipino, but you get my point. <laughs> so I am very proud to identify myself with a people and a culture, beautiful culture, that is generous, hospitable, caring, family-oriented, and spiritually resilient. But out of all the aspects of my identity that make me who I am, I am most proud of the fact that I am a daughter of followers of Jesus Christ, and most of all, I am a beloved daughter of the King of Kings. In Galatians 4, verses 5 to 7, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. In Galatians 4, 5 to 7, the Apostle Paul tells us that God sent him, Jesus, God sent his son to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because you Gentiles, and that's us, because we have become his children, God has sent the spirit of his son Jesus into our hearts, and now you can call God your dear father, Abba Father. We can call God that. So now we are no longer slaves, but God's own child. And since you are his child, everything he has belongs to you. So yes, I am a daughter of my parents, but first and foremost, I am what the scriptures say, God's own child. As a storyteller, my mom would tell us anecdotes about what she learned growing up in a dysfunctional household in the Philippines. She would tell me stories about what it was like to move around often as a child because her parents would fight a lot. She would tell me stories about how difficult it was to have her dad, her dad who was her rock, who she loved very much, her dad who moved to America in the hopes of starting a new future for his family, for his wife and five children. And she's telling me stories about the agony of missing her dad and waiting years to be petitioned to America and then transitioning into her new life as an American citizen at the age of 17. And out of the, all the trials that my mom went through, she prayed. My mom prayed through it all. She constantly held on to the words that her dad gave her before she moved to the Philippines. And she vowed as much as she could to only hold on to the good, to only hold on to the good that she learned from all her trials and tribulations in a turbulent childhood and upbringing in the Philippines. So God was there through it all. God was there, guiding my mom and dad through their parents. God was there guiding my grandparents. God was even there guiding my ancestors that I have never even met. God was there so that one day I could come into the world and discover my true identity, not just as a Filipino American, but my true identity as God's beloved child. 
So as proud as I am to be a daughter of my parents, as proud as I am to be a Filipino American, to be living out the legacy that my grandfather dreamed, I am most proud and most grateful to God that I have discovered an even greater identity that goes far beyond nationality or ethnicity, an identity that I will always be proud to identify with. The truth that I am God's own child, and so are you. Amen? Amen.